are you more excited that it's not the SEC? I would be lying if I said no, because <laughs> yes. <laughs> Episode seven. Can you believe it? We're rolling right along with this podcast, even though sometimes it gets delayed a little bit, especially how crazy things are in Atlanta sports right now. We have the Hawks in the playoffs, the Braves full force, the dream, everybody just doing their thing. Uh, The Falcons are in the middle of OTAs, so things are a little bit nuts. But here we are, married to the game, episode seven, and this one was worth the wait, I promise. Little backstory on our guest today. You're going to know who this is, especially if you're a fan of SEC football, even though this family isn't in the Southeastern Conference anymore. Once you hear her name, you're going to know exactly who she is. And the reason why her and I know each other, I covered Auburn and Alabama for three years when I lived in Montgomery, Alabama. And so her and I connected that way. I was covering those teams so closely. Her husband, his last name is Malzahn, Christy Malzahn, one of the most sensational, vibrant, um, all of the crazy, amazing adjectives to describe somebody, that's Christy. She's so much fun, so sweet, and she's very outspoken, very honest, the perfect person for this podcast. They're close to Disney, they have grandkids, they're just at such a perfect time in their life and in Gus's career to be at such an amazing school like UCF. So, so much fun. They're going to have a blast. They're already having a lot of fun. And she tells me everything and dishes some secrets too about her time at Auburn. Buckle up. This one's pretty good. Christy Malzahn. First of all, Christy, I am so excited that you're going to be on the show. You were one of the first people that I thought of. And I was like, I don't know if she's going to want to do it. I don't know. But now you're in Florida, right? Sunny Florida. Life is great. She loves to talk. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, who, would love who to was talk. I kidding? Love to talk. So. How is Florida? You know what? It is hot. It is really <laughs> hot. hot. I, um, it is great. I mean, it's, it's a, it's kind of nice to have fresh start. And um, yeah, we truly, it sounds like a cliche kind of thing, but Gus had really settled in his heart to do some TV. He wasn't looking for just any job. Yeah. Um, there had been a couple of possibilities slash, you know, what do you think kind of things happening? And he just never really had any peace, nor did he really have the oomph to want to go back in. And so, um, when this came up, he was just like, this is the deal. This is it. So he's, he is um, completely immersed it back into and trying to play catch up still, hired a staff quickly, recruiting, jumped right into spring ball, trying to get to know your team, trying all the things that, you know, and you just have no idea what you're walking into until you get there. So there's probably some level of comfort though. Cause when I saw the staff that he was hiring, it's a lot of familiar faces for you guys. Yes. We had a few that we had never worked with before, but yeah. for the most part, specific key pieces had been, you know, they were either friends or they had worked with us in the past. So we were very thankful because we got a great staff and were able to put together something special even though it was February 15th and that by that point signing days, you know, everything has already kind of ever shaken out and settled. Yeah. And I mean, this year has been a weird year for, I think for everyone, but because there's even been a couple that have changed since then, but yeah, I saw, I saw the picture. I don't know if you posted it. I, you probably posted it and it was maybe Gus, playing golf. And I was like, Oh, look, they're happy. Like they're hanging out, you know, they're chilling. And then all of a sudden I see reports that he's going to go to UCF. And I was like, wait a second. I, thought exactly we were in I, thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, we're having fun. What? We're, we're, what? <laughs> what do you mean we have to work? <laughs> there's, been a, there's been a few. I, I am super thankful, it, yeah. but it was a minute of me. It was like, we jumped in with both feet and then I went, wait a minute we're really not taking our, I mean, I had kind of mapped out the whole year. And part of that was to keep our minds busy. Sure. You you get old when you sit around and do it. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And we were like, man, we need to, 
we're going to take advantage of our time, see the, the positive side of what's going on and um, go do some things that we had never, you know, been able to do. I mean, I was kind of looking forward to like New England in the fall. Yeah. I don't get to go anywhere in the fall. Yeah. But um, I mean, in the past it was Tuscaloosa and Startable. <laughs> but, you Vacation know, mode, now, let me tell you. <laughs> I had an opportunity to go do something fun. So anyway. But hey, but now you get new cities at least. We you do. get places and to go. There's some cities that I've never been to. So I'm really excited about that. I think oh, that's cool. To Cincinnati this year. And I've been there once. Um, but my mom has history there and all that kind of cool. stuff. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. Yeah. And there's it's places that are on there that. I don't want to quote the schedule because I don't really remember. But <laughs> That's there's okay. a few that um, I hadn't ever been to. So it's going to be fun. And it's a totally different vibe. I don't know if you knew this. I'm from Florida. So I'm from South Florida. Um, but I, I know about Orlando. I know about UCF. You know, I live. Are we not in South Florida? We're kind of central, right? You're central. You're definitely central Florida. You're a hundred percent central Florida. CEF, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. University okay, of Central good. Florida. Okay, good. <laughs> I know it takes me a minute. I was told not to call it University of Central Florida, just call it UCF. If we're really, yes. you know, they tried to give us the little synopsis of don't say this, say this, don't do that. You know, it's not so UCF, and that is so we're in Central. So okay, well, and UCF has exploded too. I mean, it. it yeah. You know, whenever I was growing up, nobody went there. Like, definitely nobody played football there. And then over the last, what, like maybe five years, even a little bit before that, it, it's just become this incredible program. It's a great place to work, um, but it's a different vibe, obviously. Auburn, I've been around it. You obviously have been around it for almost 10 years, probably over 10 years when you think about yeah. when he was a we had 11 years. coordinator. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a long time, but it's, it's totally different. Did you get the sense that it was a completely different place like as soon as you got there well okay so absolutely because <laughs> I got off I got on the plane in Auburn and it was 51 and rainy and cold yeah and I landed and it was 82 and I was sweating immediately I realized <laughs> you know you don't need your suede boots even in February yeah no absolutely <laughs> you don't need you don't need any of that stuff um my yeah, it, it is a different vibe all the way around. Gus's first student interaction that he had um, at the Spring Splash that they do this little thing. Um, wore Tommy Bahama shirt, <laughs> oh you know, gosh. and it was just a totally different. He, I, he has not put on a suit and tie since the first day. There's not been wow. any. Um, you know, I think people would look at him a little strange if he walked in. And probably, you know, I'm I'm embracing the whole flip-flops and I, I you know hanging out 99 degrees when I was sitting in the shade <laughs> and it's like 3 30 in the afternoon and I'm rising it's May 5th oh my god and it gets worse what is happening it and gets worse that's the thing I'm mm -hmm. that part you know I'm still processing because I'm gonna have to find a way to keep her cool <laughs> <laughs> seriously I mean it is that's, that's a hard thing but it's yeah, brutal it there's is, no ocean there's no breeze there, no there is none and it is um tons to do right off the bat we went to Orlando Magic yeah I mean we've already been really actively doing things that you know Auburn has its beauty and has its fun but mm -hmm. it's been really nice to be in something different I'm sitting here looking out my window and people mm -hmm. out walking we lived on like a 30 acre little plot, little plot. Yeah. <laughs> never saw anybody, never heard anybody. And yesterday I'm like at five o'clock, is that somebody still doing their lawn? Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, the nice. are perfectly manicured and everything. Oh, yeah. So nice. And I just, it's, it's a new world of seeing cars, seeing people and all the fun stuff, having tons of Mexican restaurants, which was always a sad thing for guests. Wait, <laughs> is there a Waffle Mexican. House? There is a Waffle House. Are you guys going to keep that tradition or is that, are you going to leave you know, that in Auburn? I don't know. And I'll tell you why. One of our um, alumni is um, one of, I hesitate, I don't know exactly what his, I think he started First Watch. 
Okay. Breakfast place. Amazing. I love First Watch. And so, I, you know, they've kind of, I don't know, we, we might shift a little. Okay. Uh, you know, stick New with place. Breakfast. But truthfully, I, I'm good with whatever, just so long as we can eat after the game. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. for people who don't know, you guys always ate at Waffle House when you won. When we were, yes. And when we were in high school, it was usually a way just kind of to chill for a minute. And it, because his games, when he started that hurry up, no huddle thing, his game started running. Sometimes they would high school games, 10, 10 30, you know, kind of ending. It was crazy in the beginning. And so, um, not a lot of stuff. We lived in a small town. Not a lot of stuff was open, but, but Waffle House is always open. So, <laughs> um, it kind of became the thing and, and it got picked up nationally when we we went one night and it was crowded at well at in Auburn the one over by the school yeah so we left well somebody saw it and was just like oh my gosh so from that point forward they saved a booth for us so it made it nice and easy to get in and out but um yeah I just it, it's it's a great tradition and it's easy and we're just not but I don't know we're, we're doing a lot of things new and trying some new ways and it's okay and going back to your thing about UCF it is new but truly they've had more success and you know some sort of foundation being built over the past few I mean we were the recipients of the butt kicking a few years ago and so yes. we know oh, yeah. they're, they're, they were no joke yeah um and it's kind of one of those things where you see that you're not having to complete completely build from ground up but they are so young it is so young and the average age of our alumni is 36 that's crazy and seventy two thousand kids it's it's growing quickly but yeah. it's still just very young I laughed and told a lot of these kids are just now starting to get into the groove of their careers and sure what they're doing with their life so you know, well, it'll, it'll, it will be nothing but, um, better in the days to come. So it's a good time. It's yeah. Good it's time. so, I'm so excited and happy for you guys. Um, but you know, you said high school and waffle house, you guys have been together for so long. I didn't realize that the waffle house thing started in high school. Yeah. We, um, we've been married 33 years this month. Congratulations. I thank you. So we have survived each other. <laughs> <laughs> him all the time there were times he was doing me a favor and there were times I was doing him a favor but right now in life we deserve each other so, there you go uh, yeah God has a sense of humor um <laughs> we truly are you know just we've grown up kind of doing this thing I mean this is his 31st year of coaching I think so it's been a long time long so time. Was he doing, when you guys met, did you guys meet when you were in high school or when he was coaching high school football? No, no, no. We met when I was ninth grade. He was a, he was a senior. I was eighth grade and he was a junior. His junior year, he came to the school where I was. We were okay. in a small school, like one hallway. Wow. Like, when I say small, it was really small. So you're going to see him no matter what. We saw each other. His best friend was dating my best friend. I mean, you know, those kind of things. And it was just really, his class probably had 20 some odd kids and mine probably had 40. So we wow. were very involved in the hallway as far as the school. And then we started dating. I was doing my baccalaureate in May and we were married a year later. Yeah. So what? Wait, you guys got married in high school? I was 18, 19. And had just turned 19 and he was 22. I don't know how I didn't know that. I know. I don't know either. You missed out on a great story. <laughs> Not. There's no <laughs> real story. But um, yeah, it, it just how we've, he, he literally at that point was, we finished college. He finished college a couple of years before I did and before, didn't finish. Before, when he finished, we left and then um, he was coaching in high school. I mean, yeah, AAU and all these volunteer things while he was in college. Okay. And so, yeah, I've just always known he was going to coach. Always known he was going to coach. So, and he's, he's I think he's, he's a great job. Coach. So that's, 
it's been the blessing. And that was really part of the, the sabbatical time that I call it the yeah. eight week off. He really had to go through to decide, you know, what is it I'm supposed to be doing now? Maybe this is the next season of life and it's going to look differently, but nope, it's not. It not yet. Eventually. It we're in sunny Florida and he said, the night, do you ever just sit there and go, we live in Florida? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we live in Florida. Can you believe it? And I said, I know. I mean, I didn't ever dream that we'd live in Florida. If we did, I figured it would be the old days of retirement. But here we are in the <laughs> thriving time of everything in our lives. And your kids are grown. This, I mean, this is fun for you guys. Our kids are grown. Our grand boys, we've got two in They're Nashville so and we've got one coming in October in um, Birmingham. Oh. And um yeah, we just tell them they've they they term this as can we go to Kissy and Grandpa's Mickey house? So oh that's gosh, our of course. Yeah, if they want to do the whole Disney thing. I told them late fall, winter, maybe. Yeah, you don't want <laughs> to don't take them in the summer. I mean, it'll be. We've done it. We did it with ours when they were little, and it was brutal. Oh, it's brutal, so hot. Brutal. I can't do it. I mean, Levi, my husband, which is still weird for me to say, but he, he hasn't been to Disney. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, he's never been to Universal and Disney. And, you know, I grew up going there because yeah. it was only a two hour drive. And so I kept telling him, I was like, look, we got to go. Like, we're definitely going to go. I don't know when. And he's like, oh, maybe the summer. I said, you definitely have never been to Orlando. We're not going in the summer. I would literally be sitting on the wet rides the whole time because I can't, I just... No, it's not doing it. It is the truth. Hi, here are your three popcorn chicken po' boys. Have a supersonic day. If you called me a popcorn chicken, I would take that as a compliment. Compliment, right. Yeah. Hey, book, 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 popcorn chicken. See, that feels nice. Yeah, yeah. that puts a smile on my face. You call me just a chicken. Yeah, it's fighting words. Start, yeah, exactly. New Sonic popcorn chicken po' boy sandwich. Warm hoagie bun topped with jumbo popcorn chicken and creamy blackened mayo for a kick of Cajun in every bite. Try one for half price when you order online or in the app. Only online or in the Sonic app. Add-ons extra. Limit one. Not good with other offers at participating Sonic drive-ins for a limited time. You were going to tell me something, though, earlier. What yeah, well, well, one of the things that I was going to ask you is, you know, obviously this is really different and you guys are in a, a new space, a fun space. Um, are you more excited that it's not the SEC? I would be lying if I said no, because <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, it's such a great experience. I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's a lot of cool, fun stuff about the SEC. Really. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it is, you live in such a bubble and such a constant, I mean, the pressure is so intense. I mean, it, it you know, it's like you're playing a professional league in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I say that with all kindness and humility to say. But it, seriously. It is a real deal. It's just a hard, it's a hard league to be successful for long. You know, yeah. it, it's always, and I think college football as a whole has turned into that. You know, yeah. what have you done for me lately? When was the last win? And that's, you know, it almost is a joke. Gus used to say, you're only as good as your last win in the world. But he, that was before he got in the SEC. And I'm like, dude, no kidding. We probably spoke that over ourselves. Because <laughs> Seriously. The is, you, you just, if it's not a big win and it kind of gets to a point where even if you win, it's got to be a win. You know, it can't just be, a win kind of thing. There's a lot that are expected to win. And Auburn, again, is one of those places that it, the expectation is high, which we're happy to have because the truth is, Gus has high expectations for himself. Yeah. But it, it is a hard job when your in-state rival is always going to be, and you always have Georgia on the schedule every year. And you've got, I mean, your schedule is brutal every yeah. year. 
Auburn know, is not. just in such a weird place because like yeah. you said, you've got Alabama as your biggest rival and they're winning national championships consistently every year. And then <laughs> I hate to remind you. And then thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> then you also have Georgia, which is a huge rivalry. And you know, they they've been successful over the last, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. five, 10 years, whatever, or just in their history, they're successful. So Auburn was always in that tricky, like little sibling spot, right? Like you're expected to do great things. And if you're not, you know, you're not held to those other expectations. It's weird. Like I always thought that Auburn would be such an impossible job and you guys lived it. Yeah, but it's such a great place. I mean, it really, oh, I is, love Auburn. It, 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 do I? I said, I love Auburn. Yeah, I, I do. And I, I get what you're saying. Cause it is, it is that space of you see the value and they're not like other places. They really, yeah. we used to tell people our biggest selling point when we were recruiting was getting them on campus because mm -hmm. the three was. Oh, for and sure. It, and I, I expect that that will be um, truthfully even here. I think that's part of it. And yeah. it's been, but you're, com you're competing for the same group of kids with all the area schools. And then it's just a hard you're right on so many levels it's so hard when you've got somebody up north we used to say the school <laughs> which is kind of just over a little bit but um that was able to just kind of say I'm gonna pick you 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 and you <laughs> yeah it's hard it's hard and they they are very successful for a good reason and he's a great coach I mean I have nothing but respect for every coach over there for the yeah. most part you know but <laughs> <laughs> well um leave it at that but yeah I just think as a whole it's just a hard hard job it really did it is, put but... did it put pressure on your marriage um no I think if anything it solidified it was kind of like that diamond out of a piece of coal kind of a yeah. thing and that we were in the fire so much and at the end of the day it was important for us to remember consistently that it's us against everybody else when it really comes down to it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, this position has been great. And that's mm -hmm. where, I mean, I'm really, I make it a big deal to tell the coaches wives that are coming up as they're young remember it's the position that people are talking about it's the position that your husband holds it's not necessarily your husband because it can feel really personal if you're not careful um but the truth is next guy's gonna get it too and that guy over there's getting it too and that one's getting it from their people it is the position so um as as a whole it probably made us stronger because we just truly home was the safe space you know and in our world that's not very common to have a, a you know you don't have a lot of safe spaces so yeah you know, no I love that and that's great advice because I mean you know I know that you don't sit in the stands you still don't right I haven't in a long time now I would at out of town games I'll say okay. I did do that at out of town games at home games you don't kind of started back in 2009, 10, when Jonna Chizik and I would sit in that, in a room and watch it together. And it's like of, a bunker. <laughs> yeah, we did. We'd, we'd, we'd bunker down. Our Hilarious. Little, yeah, it, it really was. Um, no, I get they, it though. They I built a new nice one the last couple of years. <laughs> and so I got to sit in that, but it truly became a place that it was kind of a safety net for me to be um, able to, you know, watch and be yourself, not have to worry about people watching when I you. wanted to express yeah. and move yeah. when I wanted to, you know, all <laughs> those things. But, um, yeah, cause it, 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 we noticed early on. And even when I was traveling and I would be sitting in the stands, people would be watching to see, of was course. I in panic mode? Was I looking like I was frustrated with something? What was I saying? What was I, you know, and not that, I don't mean it to sound like people cared what I, I just had to be careful because yeah. it would either be reported, tweeted out about, you know, something. And I don't mean that sounds self-important by any means. Cause it, no, it doesn't sound that job. way. Again, no. 
it's on to someone else now. So yeah, and okay. you know, it's it's funny because you you and I have talked about this before, and you know, as a coach's wife, so I live this in two parts, right? Like because of what I do, and also as a coach's wife, like I always have to be careful about what I say, when I say it, how I say it, you know, no matter what I'm doing. And there's that constant pressure of not necessarily completely being your whole self. And you probably feel kind of the same way, right? Like you have to hold your tongue and it's like annoying to me a lot. It is, uh, you know, there's two pieces to that. First of it is that if you, what I learned was that when I was saying it, everyone assumed it was coming from Gus's mouth. And I'm- Which like, what? I don't don't get that. If you know me at all, you know, (laughs) I I have way more words than Gus. I have my own opinion. That's true. I have my own- It's very true. (laughs) It is not- guesses words or even his opinions about I mean he and I would have real conversations because we saw things differently but of course that's where I felt like I was a benefit to him in his world because I could see it from a different perspective right and bring that perspective to him at the end of the day he had to make the decisions and he had to do what he had to do but there were times that it was really like hey what about and did you think about you know how about this but it always cracked me up because people would be like uh so Gus thinks, and I'm like, how does that even heard about Gus? I don't no, get that. Straight up Christie's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but that is one piece of it. The positive side is that it gave great accountability mm-hmm. for me. It, it was um, being that I am a woman of many words. <laughs> the Lord has used that job to help refine and kind of pull in I can still have fun and I can still talk but I gotta be careful about what I say and how I say it and where I say it etc I mean you do you just have to be careful so I, I think it has some positives but I do think that there is that whole piece of it that is comical to me because people thinking that you know, I guess they think I don't have an opinion, but well, of course you guys share the same brain because you're married, right? You guys say the same things. You guys are the yeah, same person. He, he, he would never be okay with you saying that. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. So for sure. Is he, does he really not curse? Uh, <laughs> I, I've such never a loaded heard. question. I will say as a whole, no, he does not. Have I seen him be really hostile? Because as soon as I say no, he doesn't curse. They're going to pull it up on TV oh God, and show you the two or three times that he's ever. Common conversation and really even in the heat of the moment. When he was in high school, it was a real discipline to absolutely not. And his thing was, if I make it part of my casual conversation, when I'm in high stress moments, it's going to get worse because that's what's going to flood. Yeah. And so he really does challenge the staff as well as himself. Hold yourself to a high accountability. Remember, we have women and children and you want to be proud if your mom was standing here. For a lot of people, it doesn't matter. But for him, right. it mattered. And it, it was something that was important that he could communicate without, you know, the kids understood if he said that's you know, bull crap. That was just as bad. (laughs) And of course, then I laugh and I go, you know, God knows if you say it in your head, I'm not even hearing it in my head. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So he really, can I say he's never, no, I cannot. And I will not, but you know, it is something that he, it's a standard he tries to hold himself to. It's not anything that anybody else has placed. And you know, we'll see. But. I know. I was curious because I know that that's been a thing. And I was like, yeah. wait, is it serious? Like, does he really not ever? Yeah. With uh, with me, I would say 99.9% of the time, I, I, I really that. don't. I mean, it's not something that, you know, truly he, he I'm, I'm the one with potty mouth. If anybody has <laughs> You'll hear it a lot in Florida. It's going to be I, different. Well, for sure. Well, it was, I mean, it's different in the college football world. I, mm-hmm. without a doubt that's one of my things that I understand that my whole thing is you can you can talk 
yes, it'd be best if we kept our all of our language wholesome and pure. Let's just be honest. That's a calling from the scripture. I mean, that's, but the reality for me that is most important is the getting personal with it. You know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can, you can say that play was rather than saying you are a piece. Yeah, of you know what I'm saying. I agree. There, I totally there's agree. There's a difference, and I that's been the important part for me with the players and with the people. You just treat them with respect and don't yeah. talk to them in a way that you're speaking. At, at that person yeah about a play everyone gets frustrated and it's football oh, yeah. and- I mean there, there were a few calls at times <laughs> that you know what are you gonna do uh, yeah all of us were like what the <laughs> what's that you know and so I get it but right. it is you gotta keep it under control so Oh, I'm kind of glad you brought that up because I mean I could bounce around and talk to you about so many things but I feel like you guys had so many we know there were lows at Auburn. We don't have to get into all of that, but there were some really high highs. I mean, there's so many to name. Kick six would be the first one off the top of my head. Do you have a favorite? You know, um, no, because they each hold their own special moment for the moment. Um, and I'm kind of like Gus in the times that I look at and I'm like the holding on Derek Brown in 2019 at LSU consistently, never called three points, the loss. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and it would have changed. Every, I mean, it's like yeah. you literally would have. Ah! So I don't necessarily see the. I mean, I, I tend to see the things that I go, golly. That just bother you. World? Yeah, you missed it as to the ones that they actually call. I, the kick six, that, that whole 13 year, it yeah. felt like something cool was happening and we knew it was, but I'll never forget coming back in after we lost L- at LSU and came home and we did Sunday dinners with the boys during season. And we were sitting there and Trey Mason, a couple other, we were sitting having a conversation. And I said, we just have to win out. It's not a problem. We just went out. It, it's, you know, I hate losing, but went out because we were trying to really, you know, establish they had just gone three and nine the year before. There was a, there was a hard mental, we were trying to break through to get yeah. back to a place of, we believe we can win. I mean, come on. They did. And it was, it was a great year. But I also enjoyed not so significant moments, but just true big wins Mm -hmm. that you know, you know, wow, that really happened. And that was a great feeling of, ooh, that was a pretty great game, you know, kind of thing. So all the iron bowls, I mean. Yeah. But that, you know, I go back to there was a lot of really fun times in in high school stuff that were just I mean, at the moment, they were the biggest thing in the world to us, you know, because they were our games, but absolutely, so much fun. And seeing the kids, high school football is one of the more purest, one of the more, one of the purest forms of football that there is, because there is no, I mean, it's still so about team. And the more the money gets involved in college, the more it's become, I mean, you're seeing it right now with the name and image and likeness conversation. It's going to be more and more about me. Yeah. And that's a real thing that the NFL already battles that if Mm -hmm. they, you know, it's a business. And so when you look at it on the college side, there's a lot of pieces that are really businessy, especially in the SEC. Yeah. And it's getting more and more that way. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. So we're just, you know, um, push through and shock the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've always like really appreciated about you and honestly, like looked up to you for was that you always, no matter where you were at, put yourself in, you know, feet first with the kids. You were really involved with the team. Why? I mean, why did you just decide that that's what you were going to do? You know, when our girls were little, that was a hard, time was a hard thing for me because our kids were getting fewer moments with their dad. 
And then yeah. I was getting to a place of, you know, being a tired mom that was working and trying to keep everything together. And so I just started taking the girls to practice. I mean, it was literally, there were days that it happened at Hughes. It was not as common at Hughes as it was when we moved to Springdale because they'd both gotten just, Kinsey was three and Kylie was a uh, seven. And so it was a good timing for us to be able to be up there and not need to get naps and all that kind of stuff quite as much. And so we would go and watch practice and hang out and, you know, watching the girls interact with the players, the players with the girls, they felt like they were part of it. And so at that moment, it was part of, I, I truly have a grateful heart because I feel like the Lord just showed me, this is something I've called you to as well. This is not something that is just for Gus. This is for you. This yeah. is for your family. And it's going to be your choice, whether you get to be bitter or get excited about it. And um, I don't know. I think about the missed opportunities. If I had not, oh my goodness. Do you know how many of these guys, I mean, I love my guys. I love my yeah. guys. And we have had some great, you know, kids come through our time. And um, some let you in a little faster than others. Some really will you know, kind of watch you, get to know you a little bit. And about the time that they'd get to know you good enough that they would begin to really let you in, they were headed off, you know, yeah. to do their next thing. But as a whole, I just feel like it would be a missed opportunity. And they have been, they've all been a blessing, good, bad, and indifferent um, to us. And so it's been fun to get to know them and pour into their lives and just see value in what you're doing as a wife. So I don't know, I, this, this has been harder in that be, due to COVID and just coming in so late. Yeah. You know, when we went back to Auburn from Arkansas state, I didn't feel like this disconnect quite as much because we just, we had recruited most of those kids on the offensive side and knew the others from the defense so we felt like we knew the kids um but this is it's been a little bit of a challenge just trying to make it all make sense and trying to be kissy uh which is my grandmother name and mm -hmm. you know so I'm doing some of that traveling and trying to I mean I guess I said the other night how much longer until we had this house ready? <laughs> Honey, I've only been here six weeks. So you better <laughs> sit down. But I've not been in town consistently for more than four or five days. And then I'd had to be gone for two or three or whatever to, you know, go keep the grandkids or go help with my mom or, you know, whatever. And so it's been a little different. So I'm headed up there today, but the kids are not there. So it's just getting to see the coaches and stuff. But with all of the different aspects here, it's it's taking me longer than I like. You know, I, I feel like I should already know them all, which I've gotten a good start. That's good. But I just, I want to know them all before the season gets here, you know, and we normally do spring times with the boys um, in our home and, you know, just Guess started out trying to do it offense and defense. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need individual positions because I need to be able to, okay, what's her name? What's going on with her? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, um, you know, how'd you spend your first check? We'd always ask the freshmen, how'd you spend your first check? You know, because that's a great question. Those, they'd get their cost of attendance check, yeah. uh, you know, and that tells you a lot about, you know, where they are and what they were That's doing. fascinating. Yeah, just, it's interesting. Things like that, just to get to know them. So sure. hopefully, I think that was part of the point of how much longer do we have this house ready so that we can <laughs> have them over and they don't care. So it'll be soon that we'll start doing those, you know, meals through June and July so that I can get to know them just for a minute before, before season gets here. So it'll be here before you know it. More. I know it will be so fast, so fast.
Hi, here are your three popcorn chicken po' boys. Have a supersonic day. If you called me a popcorn chicken, I would take that as a compliment. Compliment, right. Yeah. Hey, book, 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 popcorn chicken. See, that feels nice. Yeah, yeah. that puts a smile on my face. You call me just a chicken. Yeah, it's fighting words. Start, yeah, exactly. New Sonic popcorn chicken po' boy sandwich. Warm hoagie bun topped with jumbo popcorn chicken and creamy blackened mayo for a kick of Cajun in every bite. Try one for half price when you order online or in the app. Only online or in the Sonic app. Add-ons extra. Limit one. Not good with other offers at participating Sonic drive-ins for a limited time. There's so many really positives to being a coach's wife. Um, you know, we've gone through those. There's so many negatives too, but I like what you said that you choose to just not feel sorry for yourself and really just enjoy the situation and enjoy what it can bring you because it can bring you a lot of really positive things. And, um, I love it as crazy as it is, as difficult as it is a lot of the time. Um, it's really rewarding and you're proof of that, you know, it's so rewarding in what you give to other people. You give these to these athletes. So what is your favorite part about being a coach's wife? Um, my favorite part, I would, I would have to say just, um, the opportunity to put a small little bitty imprint on the next generation. I mean, right now we've got kids who have got grown kids. I well, mean, that's we're 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 far enough into this that now we're seeing them become the dads and the we've watched them be good husbands and and good fathers and et cetera. And then knowing that maybe hopefully you played just a little bitty baby part of that, you know, I know it's not much, but sometimes for some it's a whole lot more than others. But yeah. um I think that's part of it. I, I think just being part of something is really great too. I, I love being part of the team, but I also love that I'm a coach's wife. And that's a great, it's a great little sorority to be part of because yeah. they are strong and kind and good women for the most part that are really, you know, doing something special, whether they realize it or not, even in the mundane, you know, just taking care of, washing the uniforms or I, I was somebody sent me a picture the other day and they were in their field house painting the you know painting the walls of their husband's <laughs> office and this that and the other and it's like it's a real deal yeah that there is no limit to what we get asked to do a lot of ways. and yes on this end it's a little nicer a little easier maybe sometimes that um but I've been through those years of where literally, you know, it was everything, everything. So it, it's kind of fun. You know, that's, that's a lot of the reason why I started this podcast is because I guess I didn't, I mean, you never know what something is until you're in it, whether it be right. marriage or kids or, or whatever the deal is. And for me, before I became a coach's wife, you know, I've always been a reporter. I had this preconceived notion of what a coach's life was. And I think a lot of people do, right. They think either you aren't working, you're not a part of the team, you're separated, you're this, you're that. I got into this and I was like, dang, like these women are awesome. Every coach's wife that I met was strong, was independent, was just all of the incredible adjectives that I can describe. And I was like, dang, like I love coaches wives. And that's why I started this podcast and you're proof of that too. I mean, I've always looked up to you. I think that you're awesome. But I agree with you a thousand percent. And I have said it for years. There's some of the strongest I know. I mean, Seriously. You right have now, to be. we've got a whole crew that are trying to find a house in this market. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. I know. Well, you know, they're handling their families' lives mm -hmm. back home. And um, truly, it's like you pick up and the guys have the unique gift of walking into an immediate group and family and camaraderie and things just kind of mesh because yeah. they're part of their own fraternity right but the wives have everything else to get done and everything from making sure that all the utilities are turned off and then turned on in the new place too seriously you know did I schedule the trash pickup you know did I get <laughs> on that list did I there have been things even with this move that I've just it's been a while since I've done that. And I, it was just like, man, it's especially moving into a city 
you're trying to find what is the best school district, what is the best, you know, what's going to be closest to all of your kids' activities, and all the while, he's got to be able to get to and from work within a very reasonable amount of time. Yep. And be available, you know, so that if he has a couple hours, he could come home and see you and see the kids. So it's just been, and this market has not been kind. <laughs> oh my it gosh. Crazy, crazy. The house market in general, anywhere is like nuts. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I don't know, but they just truly, I don't know. I don't, sometimes I feel like in our community, they probably get credit, but it, as a whole, I don't feel like they get enough credit for what they do on the, you know, we wives do as a whole, um, you know, for people's kids. Cause at yeah. the end of the day, that's really what it's about. And yeah. I'm maybe not involved in your children's lives all the time, but I'm making everything over here run smoother so that he can be all that he needs to be. All right. I know I'm limited on my time with you because you got places to be today. So I'm going to save the best question for last. I'm going to ask you a hard question. Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> what was your relationship like with Terry Saban? Hmm. See, that was a code word. <laughs> was it actually our, um, hmm. <laughs> I would say we had a relationship. Okay. She was an acquaintance that we did the same thing. And again, I have great respect for her because yeah. Miss Mary keeps it together. And I yeah. think that from what I have experienced in being in their presence and watching the two, her and Nick function, it, it reminded me a lot in the way that we did, that he, she and I are a little more outgoing and we talk yeah. and we engage and the guys are a little more buttoned up and not a lot to say. Yeah. And, you know, truly, I think she's doing a great job doing her, doing her life too. But I, I don't know that I would necessarily say we had relationship. We were Auburn and Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. We were red for 11, 12 years. <laughs> we were even at the Red Wolves and basically... I just put on a little touch of red because you don't do red. <laughs> so I, that, mm, yeah. You and all the other SEC wives are like tight or you guys are close. I wouldn't not. say that that's not true. I it's just not? would say that those two in the state of Alabama were not so close. <laughs> well, what do you guys have to be close about? You know, I don't exactly. know. <laughs> we didn't see a lot of the same. I mean, you know, her, her opinion was you know, that other opinion. <laughs> oh my so, God. She I, I rivals all the time. Very, no, I'm just dear kidding. Friends, very dear friends in the SEC coaches wives as well as other conferences. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So there's a couple, three or four that we text regularly, you know, yeah. or we stay in communication or check in on each other, talk social media, whatever. Is she even on social media? If no, she is, I, I didn't. no, like, I don't even think I'm honestly pretty sure Nick has just started to like have well, a computer. I would you would almost have to just because there's so much of that time that you can only communicate with the players by way of Twitter messages. That's what I'm you saying. Know, but like weird, but his players have told me like he would only email. And I was like, what do you mean? Well, I have to say for the longest time, guests didn't know how to create anything. He can only reply to one. <laughs> okay, I, you gotta learn. The little, so we learned. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I guess. I um, mean, I don't know that he really ever, you know, pose, like composes an email, but. I don't know because here's like outsider's perspective. I'm not married to him, obviously, and I'm not in the space. But so at Auburn, you know, Gus was kind of like, I don't want to say untouchable, but it's not like, you know, people really got to know him very well as a fan. Like you said, he's kind of buttoned up. He kind of did his own thing. You know, I feel like at UCF, he's like a new person. Like his Twitter is incredible. I'm just like, wow, he's so relaxed. This is so nice. It, 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 the Florida life has, yeah. 
literally, no. I'm blown he, away. He tweeted out the other day. He had texted me, hey, do you think it would be like, okay, if I tweeted it out? And when he did the little- Oh, so he does tweet. Like it's his Twitter for the it most part. It is totally his Twitter. It is yeah. totally his Twitter. Now I would be lying if I told you that he's the one typing out 90% of it. He right. tells them what he once said. Then he sat, you know, but he is scrolling, reading- <sighs> texting them what he wants posted but You've come a long way he's not the best speller probably <laughs> and I would probably be like are you kidding me what did you just write <laughs> so um yeah he, it is totally his but it is and for the longest time you know it all it, it just yeah he's excited different I mean, we have got good days. We've got good days ahead. And and he, like I said, he was in his Tommy Bahama shirt, having a big old Tom. And the Tommy Bahama shirt before that moment, or did he just buy it because you guys love him? They gave it to him. It was it had a okay, UCF okay. logo on it. I don't I know. Like, I, I turned around like, what are you wearing? <laughs> like they gave me this shirt and then the next thing we know it's blowing up and people on twitter asking you know where can i get that shirt and i'm laughing i'm going all right hey guys and yeah he's he's definitely um embracing just real life the whole it's it is a little more laid back it is a little more um just have fun you know there's some of that and he's it's been a long time since he's just had fun I'm so happy for you guys seriously like every time I see a video I'm just like this is the best place for them to go to if they were going to get back into coaching like this is great ding 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 it truly is it is so um you know he his whole thing guess is a dreamer and not intimidated with the whole idea of having you know there's been some you know well you're not in the you're not in a power five and he said, I'm just changing the narrative. It is, it's yeah. not about the power five or the not, it doesn't matter what our conference is. Mm-hmm. Are we, are we qualified to play whoever? So come play us and we'll, we'll talk, you know, and I think hey, UCF they, beat Auburn. They did well. And they played LSU within eight points at the year. I mean, their New Year's day bowls. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. They've, more than a lot of the other schools that are running their mouth have been able Correct. to do. Correct. And, so who um, cares about power five? Like yeah, they're still exactly. winning, and, you know, having five kids drafted the other day. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I know I I, what you need to tell. No, I mean, there's some good football being played and as a whole, there's, it's just nowhere to go, but up. So it's all good. And they, like I said, they're very young, but they've had a lot of success and they've really got a great foundation built. So we're just excited to get to see if we can't get it to that next stage. Are you, it's Kissy and what do we call Gus? What do you think? Grandpa. <laughs> oh, I mean, are did- you kidding me? I came up with some of the cutest names, but that, that right there tells you who we are. I'm Kissy and my my son-in-law is like Kissy. This mean, is cute because Christy. Well, I mean, that's what cute. I said. It sounds like a two-year-old Wednesday Christy. You know, I mean, who cares? It's cute. <laughs> and I don't hear it everywhere. My nieces, I tried to get that most of them called me Kiki for years. And then Kim Kardashian and that crew took over. And I was like, no, 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 no. Shut that down. Take my name, I'm out. Yep. So then I became Kissy for Anderson three years ago. And guess was I was like Kissy and Coach, or he was like, everybody calls me Coach. I don't want that. I want something special for my grandkids. So we had So we went with grandpa? We had everything. <laughs> grandpa. Kissy and grandpa. Mm-hmm. Are you guys gonna wear the Mickey ears when you take the grandkids to I, I Disney? I've already got some UCF Mickey ears. Go! Yes! Student's headband. We're on brand. The little, yes, with the little UCS and then my little black bow. And Love I'm it. I'm loving my color scheme. I look good in gold and I look <laughs> great in black. So, <laughs> black it's on great black colors. On black with a pop of gold. I am good. Love it. So, Love it. Yes. Perfect colors. Perfect colors. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm really happy for you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon.
so at this point in the podcast, I always talk about what I found the most interesting. And <laughs> really, if you can't tell, Christy and I love talking to each other. We're so giggly and it's just so much fun. Um, I love her recalling her time at Auburn and also being really honest about the pressures that come with coaching in the Southeastern Conference. Those of you that are fans or maybe not even direct fans of the SEC understand how intense it really is. But imagine being Gus Malzahn, right? When he was at Auburn, you have Nick Saban up the road, winning national championships every year. It was just such a hard job. And at the end, he ended up at UCF, but super happy for that family. Uh, they're going to have a great time in Orlando, and I hope you enjoyed that episode. But on my next episode, I've got a TikTok star. No, seriously. Her husband plays for the Indianapolis Colts now, but he's an Atlanta native, went to high school here in this area. Her name is Allie Rochelle, and she is married to Isaac Rochelle. Such a dynamic duo. They are so much fun. So before you listen to that episode, make sure you check out her TikTok because she's hilarious. I mean, she really honestly dishes what it's like to be married to a professional football player, to an NFL player, and she's so funny and so genuine, so down to earth. They're really cool. They just moved from California because he was with the Chargers, so Indianapolis is an adjustment, but they're loving life so far. So that episode is coming out soon, but until then, I'm Maria Martin, and this is Married to the Game. Oh, 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 oh,